The story behind today's video starts very similarly to many of my videos, with me walking into a Best Buy and being disgusted by a gaming PC. Now, about a year ago at this point, I did a video on a different Asus Strix gaming PC, which, um, well, it wasn't very good. This one seems very similar to that one, just worse somehow. That, that really takes some doing. But before we check out this system, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor that helped pay for this poor little PC. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their amazing 5000D series of cases. They come in three different flavors, solid panel, airflow, and RGB bonanza. The 5000D series of cases not only look spectacular, but they're also highly versatile, with radiator mounting support up the butt. There's 360mm radiator mounting in the top, front, and the side of the case, with ample airflow clearance to feed those radiators even on the solid panel versions. Every 5000D is shipped using soft, luscious packing foam, which means they'll get to your door undamaged, and they have more than enough cable straps for some light bondage action. So if you want to build the PC of your dreams in a highly flexible, sexy case, check out the Corsair 5000D with the link in the description below. Okay, in standard Asus fashion, they have some high quality foam in here. Oh, it looks like they ship it without a side panel on. They did actually ship the system without the glass panel attached. Perspex panel. Here we have our Asus flavor e-waste peripherals. And here's another box of goodies. Ooh, Ooh almost dropped that. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, oh, okay, it looks like you get to choose your side panel. I'm guessing this one is the performance side panel and the other one is gonna be the sauna side panel. We'll definitely test the thermal differences between the two later in the video. Having a look at the front panel of this case, um, I'm confused because according to Asus's website, they show fresh air going through the front of the case, cooling the hot components inside. However, if you have a closer look at what can only be described as the ventilation effect on the front of the case, I don't know, unless Asus has invented the technology that allows air to phase through solid matter, I don't think any fresh air is getting through there. Having a look at the top of the case, you can see that we have a pretty basic front IO and, um, oh, there's the power button. And then having a look behind the bit of front IO is just a solid panel. Around the back, we've got an okay rear I.O., although we don't have any USB-C ports, which at this price point isn't ideal. And then we've got a whole bunch of video outs with a power supply that looks like it's from 1972. Ha, <laughs> would you look at that, our good old friend, a single 16 gig stick of RAM in a motherboard with four DIMM slots really gets my juices flowing. Next to that, we have a pretty interesting looking CPU cooler. I think it's the same one that came with the previous Strix system that I looked at. Uh, those temperatures should be exciting. Under there, we do have a Ryzen 7 3700X, so that is an eight core 16 thread CPU. And then when it comes to the motherboard, we have what looks like a standard MATX motherboard, so no weird proprietary shape. And if this is anything like a standard Asus motherboard, this may have a huge step up over other OEM systems in terms of RAM compatibility. If we can enable XMPs on this bad boy, I'll be inappropriately aroused, but we'll test that out later in the video. And actually, on the note of upgradability, if you have a closer look at this cooler equivalent of a damp handshake, you can see that it uses the stock AMD mounting hardware, which means if there isn't something weird going on in the back of the case, you could potentially easily upgrade the cooler on the system, which will be pretty cool. Other than that, we have a one terabyte SN530WD blue NVMe drive, and the star of the show, an RTX 3070, which has a blower cooler on it. If you look down here, there isn't much space for air to enter that fan, but luckily this 3070 is gonna dump most of its heat out of the case, 
uh, which should help CPU temperatures a bit considering the restricted airflow. Actually, on the note of airflow, if you have a look at the front of the case, you can see that Asus very optimistically cut some ventilation in the front of the case. And if you shine a light through the front panel, you can see there is a minute bit of light spill, which may redeem Asus's misleading marketing. But then you realize the reason that there's light spill is because there's a semi-transparent bit of plastic there so that the RGB LEDs behind can shine through and look all pretty, but still no airflow. In terms of cable management, other than a bit of a skew USB 3 front header cable, it's actually really good for an OEM pre-built. In terms of the rear cable management, it's actually really good for an OEM pre-built. You can see that things are routed along places that make sense and yeah, it's not bad. This rear backplate does not seem too obstructed, so hopefully you can get that out without having to remove the motherboard. So it means that it should be pretty easy to upgrade the cooler on this system. Down here, unfortunately, we don't have any additional hard drive cages, although it does seem like there is mounting for one in the base there. And that is actually one of the reasons why it seems to be pretty easy to cable manage in this case. You have a nice big hole to just stuff things in. However, that unmarked power supply does seem a little bit like an unlikely source of an insurance scam fire. Please ignore the weird angle, it was quite difficult to get out, but this seems to be a Chaconi power supply and it's 80 plus bronze rated and it's a 500 watt unit. Now I've not really seen a Chaconi power supply before, but from a quick Google, they seem to be an OEM that makes mostly laptop power supplies. Hopefully that 500 watt unit won't struggle too much with the RTX 3070. But with that, let's put this questionable marketing exercise back together and see what kind of PCVD it comes with. Mm. Oh, actually, before we get to the whole PCVD thing, I just wanted to point out the acrylic side panel mount, which uses the standoffs that leads to a pretty big panel gap. Um, that doesn't look great, but at least it may help with airflow a teeny bit, I guess, if you're being optimistic. Uh, yeah, so let's fire it up and see what's going on on this system. Okay, so here we are in Windows with a gamer background and uh, what is this? My Asus. It seems like my Asus is just a customer support portal here for various issues that you may regularly encounter on the system. There's also a promotion page. You can also have like a my Asus account. This is fairly standard. Most pre-builds have software like this on there. Other than that, it comes with Armory Crate installed. More like bloatware crate, am I right? I actually really hate Armory Crate. It's caused problems on every system that I've had it running on. So uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I guess it makes sense that it's on here. It is an Asus product, but it, it, I hate that piece of software. McAfee also makes a miraculous return. I've, I've missed McAfee on the last couple of systems. But other than that, this, for an OEM system, honestly isn't that bad. There, there is a bunch of random crap in here, but I've seen way worse than this. So that's, you know, good job on that one, Asus. Let's have a look at what Task Manager has to say. The RAM is running at its rated 3200 megahertz speed, so that's good but we do only have a single stick of RAM in there. And as we've established multiple times in previous videos, Ryzen hates single channel RAM with a burning passion likened to a thousand suns. Uh, so that is definitely gonna affect gaming performance. Let's quickly check out the BIOS to see what kind of RAM speed options we have in there. Yes, this does look like an Asus BIOS, which again, Asus is a motherboard manufacturer, so you'd hope that they'd get this bit of the system right. Oh, that's already worrying. We're sitting at 60 degrees Celsius on the CPU in the BIOS. Memory frequency auto. Yes, look at that. Look at that. That's so beautiful. Hopefully that means we can just drop any off-the-shelf kit of RAM in here and it can run at its rated speed. I'll definitely test that and its performance impact after the gaming session. Ooh, look at those memory timings. That is very loose. And considering the RAM configuration in the system, we're definitely gonna be losing out on quite a bit of performance. Okay, but with that, let's do some gaming and hope that it doesn't catch on fire. Okay, so at this point, we're about 45 minutes into a session of Battlefield 5. Uh, now this is running at 1080p, which is not the recommended resolution for a 3070. The 3070 is much more at home at 1440p. Uh, well, like we asserted earlier, the system's really noisy. It sounds like two transformers making sweet love.
And that's with neither of the components working particularly hard. The other problem is frame rate. Under 100 frames per second at 1080p high settings with a 3700X and an RTX 3070 is terrible. That is really not the frame rate that you're expecting from that hardware configuration. Now, moving over to non-native 1440p, we can see that the graphics card temperatures have actually started increasing slightly. Yeah, look at those GPU temps now. Now that we've gone from 40% utilization to about 60% utilization, we're now getting to that 83 degrees Celsius barrier that we're so scared of. Um, and the other thing that we'll notice is that the frame rate hasn't changed much. The fact that the system's performance seems so kneecapped is almost definitely because of the RAM configuration, but again, we'll do a quick test later in the video to confirm that. Wow, that gaming performance is pretty shocking. Uh, now again, I understand that a 3700X and an RTX 3070 isn't an ideal pairing for 1080p. You're definitely gonna see a CPU bottleneck even in ideal situations. But an average of 94 frames per second in Battlefield 5 with high settings in an RTX 3070, that's definitely problematic. So let's try a different RAM kit in here that's dual channel to A, see if that BIOS that looks normal actually allows us to clock the RAM properly, even without JEDEC profiles, and then let's see how much more performance we get with a proper RAM configuration. Now that we have our HyperX kit in here, you can see that we can actually manually set the RAM speed to 3200 MHz, which that is amazing, and that's pretty much a game changer in terms of OEM pre-builds. This is the only one I've seen so far that actually lets you manually clock the RAM, so good job on that one, Asus, that's really awesome. That performance difference is actually bigger than I was expecting. We went from 94 frames per second average to 131 frames per second. Again, remember, it's the same amount of RAM running at the same speed. The only difference is the one is a single 16 gig stick and the other one is two 8 gig sticks. And I show this all the time on the channel, but if Ryzen was a person, it would probably be a single channel RAM serial killer. However, there is a little bit of a weird byproduct from this additional performance. The fact that we've alleviated some of the memory bandwidth bottleneck, it means that both the CPU and the graphics card are working a little bit harder, which means we have higher temperatures while gaming. Um, yeah, it's getting even hotter and even louder in this configuration. In fact, moving over to 1440p with higher GPU utilization, after only a couple of minutes of gaming, the graphics card is already having to reduce its core frequency to control the temperatures, which is real bad. Which I think means this is a good point to test the thermal performance difference between this sauna acrylic side panel and the high performance perforated side panel. Now for this temperature test, I am gonna put the stock single 16 gig stick back in there so that we can compare the two side panels in the system's stock configuration. Okay, so it didn't make a massive difference. The CPU temperatures are pretty much the same, although the graphics card temperatures are a bit lower despite the fact that the utilization is actually higher in this example. So it shows that actual airflow is definitely better than marketed airflow. Although again, there is a bit of a trade-off that we have with the side panel. The temperatures may be lower, but considering that the perforations are on the side, kind of facing at you, it means that the noise is somehow more clear, which I didn't think was possible considering that even with the acrylic side panel, the system sounds like a Spitfire being strangled in a tin bath. But let's have a quick listen to what the system sounds like while gaming with the different side panels on. In conclusion, 
As is the case with all OEM pre-builds, this is a mixed bag. On the one hand, we have some of the best upgradability I've seen on an OEM pre-build. And that, mixed with the fact that you can manually clock the RAM to its rated speed, means you can buy RAM from Amazon or your local PC shop without having to worry about JEDC profile compatibility, and that just makes such a big difference. I, re I really like that. But on the other hand, for a system that cost me $1,600 and normally costs a thousand eight hundred dollars when it's not on sale the noise and the build quality and the misleading marketing is all just too problematic asus all you need to do to make this the best oem pre-built available is just put a better cooler on the cpu i know you have them available because you show them in your marketing you you have to have them knocking around somewhere also phase this terrible case out please don't use it anymore uh, the other strict system i reviewed had an amazing case in fact that was the best part about that system System. Why not use that instead of this one for, for all of your pre-builds? I get that they're a different form factor and whatever, but you know how to make good cases. Why are you... What is, what is this thing? Why? <laughs> Why? Which brings me to the end of the video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this bit of misleading marketing from Asus. Very naughty Asus. Very naughty. Um, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you like this kind of content. And yeah, until the next video. Bye-bye.